All of us have our vices like smoking, drinking or binge eating that we'd like to cut down on or stop entirely. How can we use our mindfulness practice to let go of our craving? Welcome to Mindfulness for Beginners. Hello my friend, I hope you're happy, I hope you're peaceful. Last year I talked about how we can break free from our self-destructive ways by being aware of the power of habits. I wanted to explore that theme a little more and expand on how mindfulness can provide some practical help. I've had, and continue to have, plenty of bad habits, and I know that giving them up can be very difficult. I used to smoke in my young and reckless days. I had started working in a call centre, fixing people's printers over the phone, And the only way that you could get out for a break was if you smoked. So being the sensible, rational person that I was in my early 20s, I became a smoker. Very good for making friends because everyone in Northern Ireland smoked back then. Less good for my lungs in the long run. And I'm sure that has some parallels to your life. In many ways, what we're trying to do by changing our habits is to address the decisions we made in our youth when we struggle to accept our feelings so we dealt with them in less constructive ways. It's easy to beat yourself up for the habit you've developed. I certainly did over smoking, thinking, why on earth did I start this? But you don't have to. Be kind to yourself. Like everyone else, you were doing the best you could given the circumstances of your life. So what can we do to address our craving with kindness? One of the key concepts is the idea of impermanence. Nothing stays as it is, and everything is in a constant state of transformation, including our mental state. How we feel right now in this moment always passes, even though when we're experiencing something powerful, we might believe that we're going to feel this way forever. When we desire a cigarette, or food, or alcohol, or whatever it is, it can feel all-consuming, but remembering that our feelings are impermanent will help us to ride the storm and focus on our breath. You don't need to hold on for all that long for cravings to pass. A few minutes is usually enough. So if you commit to waiting for 10 minutes when desire arises, you'll probably give yourself enough time for the feeling to pass. Try to smile to your craving, see it for what it is. A tool, a crutch that we use to avoid being in touch with how we're feeling. And we can also notice what feelings we have connected to our craving and gain insight into how they feed into our everyday life and conversations. What was arising for me was anger when I was giving up smoking. I was incredibly irritable. Other people are understanding of what you're going through, of course, but we have to be careful, take an extra breath before we speak, before we react, and when we're getting used to living without our vice. I didn't do this enough, and my poor brother, who I was sharing a flat with at the time, had to put up with uh, some unreasonable behaviours. I'm sorry, bro, but I am grateful for all the support that he provided. And it's critical to you to surround yourself with people that are supportive of the choices that you're trying to make. If you want to quit drinking and all your friends are drinking buddies who want to continue as they are, then it's probably time to expand out your social network. Join groups around new wholesome activities you want to try, for example, hiking, creative activities, or why not join your local mindfulness group uh, called a Sangha. Plum Village Sanghas are located in most cities and towns and are available online too. Search for Plum Village, find a group. Another key idea within mindfulness that can help is acceptance. Accept your habits and the energy that they have. You've been living with them for a very long time and it's not easy to forge a new path, so don't expect things to change immediately. I need several attempts to quit smoking, and it's important not to let perfect get in the way of progress. By which I mean, don't throw in the towel when you lapse back into your old ways. Accept that it's not easy, and changing your habits may need several attempts. When you lapse and consume again, do it with your full awareness. This means seeing the impact that it has on you as you're consuming it. Don't go back to having a mindless smoke in front of the TV. Really pay attention and see the interconnections. And it'll make picking up the baton again all the easier. So now we're going to do a guided meditation on impermanence. We're going to have our old friend, 
the water in a wave guided meditation. So if you want to take a moment to make yourself comfortable, I'll start with three sounds of the bell and the usual settling in introduction. So firstly, focusing on our posture. I you know, invite you to imagine that you have a thread attached to the crown of your head. And it's gently pulling you upwards into an upright position. Your spine like a stack of coins. Your heart raised upwards and outwards. Your hands comfortably in your lap. And allowing a gentle smile to emerge in your face. And expanding that spotlight of awareness to your entire body. Noticing where you feel warm or cold. Where you feel tense or relaxed. Becoming aware of the sensation of the clothes against your skin. And the points of contact between your body and the chair and the floor. And moving that spotlight of awareness to your thoughts and feelings. And as we go through the guided meditation, noticing each thought as it arises, and that might be an anxious thought about tomorrow. It could be a happy thought about today. Or a sad thought about yesterday. Just sitting with each thought as it arises, allowing it to leave and gently and without judgment bringing your attention back to your breath. Finally focusing your awareness in your breath noticing that column of air between your nose and your diaphragm Noticing how the air feels cooler on the way in. Warmer on the way out. Aware of a wave on the ocean, I breathe in. Smiling to the wave on the ocean, I breathe out. Wave on the ocean, smiling.
aware of the water and the wave, I breathe in. Smiling to the water and the wave, I breathe out. Water and wave, smiling. Seeing the birth of a wave, I breathe in. Smiling to the birth of the wave, I breathe out. Birth of a wave, smiling.
seeing the death of a wave, I breathe in. Smiling to the death of the wave, I breathe out. Death of a wave, smiling. Seeing the birthless nature of the water and the wave, I breathe in. Smiling to the birthless nature of the water and the wave, I breathe out. Birthless water and wave, smiling.
Seeing the deathless nature of the water in a wave, I breathe in. Smiling to the deathless nature of the water in a wave, I breathe out. Deathless water and wave, smiling. As we reach the end of the guided meditation, noticing any changes in your body, in areas of relaxation, in areas of discomfort, and just take an opportunity to stretch those areas. And noticing any changes in your mind, and if you feel a sense of calm or peace, setting the intention to carry that through the rest of your day. And finally, opening your eyes and returning your awareness to the room that you're in. And just before we finish, a couple of quick reminders. Uh, I'm organising a seminar on stress, uh, which will be delivered over Zoom. 
if that's something that you're interested in, if you're interested in living a, a life free of stress, then uh, please do use the link that's in the description and just let me know if you're interested. If we get enough uh, numbers, then I'll, I'll set a date for a, a couple of months time. So it'd be great to see you there. Uh, and also, if you're enjoying the podcast, then uh, please do share it. Uh, it massively helps spreading the podcast. It would mean a lot to me personally. Uh, you can add it to social media. Uh, you can email it to a friend. Or you can create a massive Mindfulness for Beginners flag and fly that outside your house. Any of those is perfectly acceptable. I may be happy. may be peaceful. And may you see yourself through the eyes of understanding and compassion. Slana will you? And I'll see you next time.